I stopped being cheap and got a rolling pin and for the first time ever we're making a bug without a tinfoil base. Today we are making a challenge for the perseverance of man and the fortitude of my sanity by creating a butterfly. Since there's no tinfo base, this one will be entirely made out of clay and wire. How fun! So I cut out the shape of the wings and to ensure symmetry, I simply trace the cut wing to make another twin version of it. From there, I smooth out the jagged edges with this tool that's not even mine, it's my mom's. As every freeloading daughter would say, it's mine now. Using my rolling pin, which is now the best tool in my arsenal, I repeat the same process for the hind wings, but this time I include the titular tail of the swallowtail. It's up for debate, but I believe the hind wings were way too small to be proportionate, so I bulk them up so that there'd be less of a difference between them and the four wings, and from there, did the whole trace then cut it out thing. Considering how thin the wings are, I needed to give them some wire backing, which not only makes them hard instead of flaccid, but also gives me a way to attach the wings to the body. And to hide the wire, I doubled up on the clay, using my ever handy rolling pin to really smush them together while keeping them nice and flat. So now, for the millionth time in this one video, I'm going to trace and cut once more before smoothing out the edges, as well as pinching the places where they aren't connected enough. Now I'm really overdoing it with the rolling pin, but look at that, it's so flat, it's stupid. Does it make my fingers obsolete? Or does it enhance them like Edward Scissorhands, but with a rolling pin? Baking the wings separately, now I'm going to work on the body and things are about to get fucked up, but whatever. I'm making my little turd now and at this point I don't even realize what's going to happen. But what am I even doing there? I was deadass just looking for an excuse to use a rolling pin. Like talk about obsessed, give it a break. But anyways, I'm attaching the head, but I'm just pushing and pulling the body so that the difference between the thorax and the abdomen are more implied than defined. But with this one wire I'm about to push through, it's not going to be that big a deal. Everybody knows from that one episode of SpongeBob that butterflies have spiral mouths, so I thought, and this is one of my better ideas in this video, to use that as a backbone for the entire thing. So I pinch and I pull a bit more. I attach these questionable eyes, which aren't bad, but I realize that butterfly heads are way thinner than this, so the eyes are more orb-like and don't just face forward. So whatever, perhaps I'll do that for the next Lepidoptera. Or maybe I won't. I can't predict the future. From there it's safe to make the legs though. The legs are a cute little mountain shape, and butterflies are regular insects, so they have a regular number of six legs. I attach these to the body and spend an ungodly amount of time trying to reposition them, which my editor graciously cut out for your sakes, really. Then I cover them up with an enchantingly flat piece of clay. I wonder how it got so flat. <gasps> the wings are ready. I just poke them in so that the body can bake separately with the holes, so it's almost as if I have a plan, but I don't. I think I'm like John McCain, but really, I'm about to ruin Christmas. I did mean it when I said I was going to start sanding more, so here I am doing just that, like the angel from heaven that I am. Yes, we all witnessed the same thing. I was hot gluing the butterfly. I deserve to be flogged, and yes, I will get my comeuppance. The wire of the wings fit perfect and snug in the now baked body piece, but no, no. I deserve no praise, because no, I continue with the hot glue. It was a gamble and a bad one. I deserve to be exiled for my crimes. I piled it on and had the audacity to cover it with more clay. And now here I am with enough gall to try and make it look good. Now I know what you're thinking, Sydney, the wings look all right but the body looks like ass right now. And you'd be right. The glue isn't even stopping the legs from falling out. I almost am able to bear the weight of my sins by disguising them with more clay, by outlining the wings, going about the details as if what I'm doing isn't fucking crazy, building up the wings, sticking in the thorax with hair as if it's a moth, but moths are better anyway. I even like the bozo I was embodying. Forgot to put in the antenna before it baked. That's how fucked this is. And now, as the prophecy foretold, it all fell apart upon the third baking. But whatever. I built it from scratch off camera. I kept the wings, but threw away the entire body piece. 
remember to put in the antenna beforehand, and said fuck the legs altogether. And this time when I baked it, it worked. I traced the design, and with my perilous build journey finish, I can paint in peace. With all of my dramatics, I wasn't even able to specify what kind of butterfly this is. It's a common rose butterfly, but instead of its usual red color scheme, I'm keeping nature's design, but making it purple. Purple with a nice gradient at that. Finding a technique that worked took a bit of trial and error. I thought I liked it one way, but then I'd continue and end up changing it because what I'm trying to do here is recreate this fuzzy yet defined look on the wings. What ultimately stuck was this kind of layering process where I'd put down a bit of black, then smudge it a bit with the purple, then go over with a more defined black, and that worked. Butterflies are about as detailed as a group as you can get, which is why they've been the pretty princesses of the bug world for basically ever. I still think moths are better, but it's fine, because I'm not about to pit two bad bitches against each other. But I bring that up to say that I had to do a lot of detail work on this one. Detail is my favorite part, so I truly didn't care. So you'll see me do a lot of outlining, defining, and a lot of pointillism, which you can see on these completed four wings. Now, if you think the four wings are detailed, get fucked, because the hind wings are way more detailed, but oh, so gratifying to complete. I did a lot of underpainting for this one because I wanted the colors to shine through as much as possible. A butterfly's wings are actually made up of almost microscopic scales that allow for extensive shifts in color and color structures. Hence why I use a lot of metallics, color shift paint, glitter glaze, and pointillism on top to really emphasize just how sick this shit is. So as you can see, even with the metallic paint on top, you can still see the blue poking through at some angles, just like how the butterfly wings shimmer and the colors shift when they move at certain angles. So now, I'm just blocking out some places where instead of blue and purple and black is going to be pale pinks and white. I kind of haphazardly painted it on because I'm going to outline it with paint later and on top of that, add pointillism, so the roughness of right now won't even matter in a moment. See? There's the outline. Look at that! I almost gave myself a stiffy. It was about now that I had the idea to add the glitter glaze on top to emphasize the scale idea even more. And you can't even really see it there, but you'll see it in the pictures for sure. Now, back to the pointillism! I loved this part. It was so euphoric. It even made up for the fuckery this bug put me through earlier. Hopefully, you zone out watching this just like I did while doing it. almost done. Not to flick my own bean here like I do in every video, but the wings look so beautiful. I might even do another Lepidoptera next month just for the shits and gigs of it. But anywho, now I'm diddling away at the abdomen, painting it gold, adding some line details, another healthy amount of pointillism because I can't seem to let that go, and after that I'll throw in some more metallics because why not? While I'm doing that, and throwing in some extra details as I do, I'd like to take this time to say that my last video, my Hercules Beetle, really did go the distance. It was a milestone video because not only was it my first video to reach 1,000 views, but it also helped me break 150 subs. So thank you so, 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 so much. You make my heart soar, and seeing that really just I feel so hashtag blessed, seriously. Thank you so much. At this rate, I think I can reach my goal of a thousand subs by the end of the year, if not by summer. So thanks. Okay, enough of the melodrama. I glazed the entire thing in my regular Sculpey finishing glaze, and now I'm throwing on the beads for the antenna. I used long beads instead of round ones, then I finished off the tip with hot glue, and that's it. 
Let me know what you think I should name her in the comments. If you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. Thank you again, and see you for the next one. Bye!